All right, so we're back uh, with part two of our conversation with uh, Ned Ryan, the founder and CEO of American Majority, which trains candidate liberty loving, I think you said candidates uh, and activists. Yeah. Uh, and we were talking about how the 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 there's stupid money on the right that's uh, got the wrong ratio of uh, support for the intellectual infrastructure and action oriented groups. I'm summarizing yeah. your position there, I think fairly. Yeah, no, no. I mean, this is a Mike, you'll, you'll catch a theme with me that you actually you, you have to be founded in good ideas, but action is the soul of revolution, right? And, and, and unless you there's action that goes with your ideas, and again, I say this all the time, you authenticate and validate what you believe by what you do. And I think we, we, we have a little bit of a disconnect in the conservative movement on, on, on that basic philosophy. So one, what's the right ratio? And I understand it might change over time. What would the current correct well, the, ratio be? Well, I think you got to flip it all on your head, on its head in the short term, just because white papers and intellectual ammunition, I think, are, are what you do for governing. Right. You, you've got to be able to govern in the right way. We're nowhere near that. And I wrote a piece last year for American Greatness in which I laid out it's time for a new right, in which I think we have to change our mindset and approach where we're at right now in 2021 as more of a guerrilla warfare against a massive administrative state and a massively well-funded left in which we've got to approach it a little bit differently to go at it in which we can actually have more power to implement our ideas. So I, I would argue in the short term, Mike, we've got we've to gotta invest more into action-oriented things. At the same time, I'm not saying to totally dismiss intellectual ammunition. We've got to keep that somewhat robust moving along. At the same time, I think the majority of the money should go into how do we put people in the position to actually implement ideas? And when you say that, you mean you don't, uh, your, your universe of givers here is including C4s. You're not yes. playing games with the, okay, just to make yeah, that. Absolutely. Clear. So you have to understand with American majority, American majority is, American majority is the C3. And then American majority action is the C4. And American majority does nonpartisan education on basics of how you run for office. With American majority action, we do issue advocacy. And then obviously you can do direct advocacy. Yeah. Uh, once you hit a certain ratio. So, you know, the way you're talking, one might think we conservatives, if I can include us both within that for a little yeah. bit here, uh, have won the battle of ideas. I mean, it, but that's not true. Kids, you know, if you look at polls about what capitalism, and Mar you know, what, uh, what comes first, I guess, this is the same version of the question. So, but, uh, we're not like winning, handing the other side their rear ends on ideas. No. Uh, th so I had this conversation seven years ago in which I was on a panel and the question was asked, are we winning or losing? This was seven years ago. And I said, we're losing on every front. Look at the size of government, look at our debt, look at everything and just went through a whole list of things. And then somebody whose initials are JG who used to write for a NRO, leave it at that, said, no, we're winning. No, we've got great things. We got Fox News, we've got radio, we've got all these robust think tanks. I said, you know what you're basically describing in many ways? We've got better uniforms, we've got, uh -huh. the, hottest, we've got the hottest cheerleaders, and we're down 40 in the fourth quarter. And I really think that in some ways is, is what we're dealing with right now in which people are like, well, we've got all these really pretty shiny things, but I'm like, look at the scoreboard. Look what's actually happening in reality in which we have a massive administrative state. We have a very robust, very un-American left that is on the move. Quite frankly, I would argue is winning. And, and the only respite we've had in recent times, whether people like to admit it or not, is Donald Trump. If it were not for that, it would have been a nonstop march towards statism. And now we have to ask ourselves, are we winning or losing? And I would argue we were losing and quite frankly have been losing for a while. And the thing that really frustrates me, Mike, on, on, in some ways at a very fundamental level is there are too many people on center right who have bought into the entire premise and are fighting on the progressives battleground because they've accepted the premise of an administrative state, which is the exact opposite of the constitutional republic. We need to have people that are gonna, willing to go in and say, I, I reject the premise. I reject the entire premise of progressivism and administrative state. And my hope is, and this is the one thing that I keep on beating the drum on Mike, I would really, really like someone at some point inside the think tank world 
to come up with a roadmap to how you deconstruct the administrative state in a four-year administration. And then if you get a second term, how you keep on devolving it in the second term. So let's talk about your timeline. I mean, you know, I came from a philanthropy that would have had a timeline, a C3 though now, and that would be a fair answer on your part. Uh, three to four years is not enough time to change America. Don't no. you need decades? What, what is this three to four years you're talking about? You might've said five to 10 actually initially, but uh, you're giving politi ten. political uh, timeframes as opposed to I'll say long-term ideas oriented philanthropy ones. Uh, no. And if so, isn't that, uh, aren't there, wouldn't the risks be entailed in short-term ism? So I think, uh, you know, not to be too cute in the answer, the short-term and long-term. I mean, we didn't get here overnight. I, I, I would argue we've been getting here for the last, well, 100 years, really, since 1920. Uh, it's been 100 years of, of progressivism that has really been the dominant ideology. So you're not going to get out of it overnight. So when I say five to 10 years, I think you can turn the ship around in some ways. Um, when I say four years, that's if you have a, an administration that truly buys into devolving the administrative state, hopefully eight years. You know, I would argue you're probably going to need 12 years of actually being in control in D.C. to really put things kind of on the right path. But here's the problem. And I've said this many times. You know, I thought Donald Trump was was great because, hey, what a shocking concept and a government of by and for the people. How about the government actually serves the interests of the American people? That was really the fundamental shocking concept of, of Donald Trump. What he got wrong. And I've had this conversation with with him and with some others personnel. He needed to actually get personnel right to go inside of these various departments to have people that bought into this philosophy of, of devolving power. And that's where you would think C3 think tanks could have had a better bench. Yes. Right. And, you know, it was not. you limit your indictment to the last 40 years of conservatism. I mean, Reagan had the heritage binder behind him on the shelf, which so I assume you would say that that is a proper role for C3 think tanks and so forth. And they just haven't done as good a job doing it in the uh, what you know yeah. in yeah, our own. Is, well so th there's a whole there was a whole kind of cluster that took place in the beginning of the Trump administration in which god that's a longer conversation I'll just say this the wrong person was running PPO at the very beginning yeah. not conservative bought into basic philosophy really didn't know what he was doing Johnny DeStefano um, and it really wasn't until the last nine or ten months that Johnny McEntee came in to run presidential personnel so when you have a bottleneck of somebody that's not bought into the philosophy and doesn't really know what they're doing, that becomes a problem. At the same time, I mean, think about this, Mike, what the what the, those people that are now staffing the Biden administration were doing, they had been an administration and waiting for years. And I think we have failed on that front because we haven't been doing what we should be doing to recruit and organize and get the talent ready and, and prepared to come into a, hopefully another America first administration and able to hit the ground running from day one. And there, there are people trying to put, I'll say, intellectual heft on Trumpism and you would be for that. That's within yeah, well, the ratio of-, of Yeah, 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 okay. yeah no, I, I, I do. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think there are some people out there that are trying to do the right things. And again, I, when, when people see some of my stuff, this is, Sometimes it comes, a, and I don't want it to, a wholesale rejection. Yeah. Everybody's bad. That's not mm -hmm. true. I, I would argue probably 80% of it should really be strongly reimagined and re-envisioned. Yeah. Um, do I think that it's all been a waste? No. Do I think we've gotten the best bang for our buck? Not even close. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? I, in, in this recent piece, Mike, that I wrote, I mean, this kind of shows a little bit this microcosm of something that's happening here in Loudoun County right now. George Soros in 2019, and again, this, you know, blurs a little bit of the lines, and, and I, I understand a little bit because this was political giving, but he put 980000 into Commonwealth's attorney race here, and this has been highly problematic with a far-left Commonwealth's attorney who has been in cahoots with the Loudoun County School Board, all of that. Most of our conservative donors don't even know the term Commonwealth's attorney exists, and I think that's a real problem, and it comes down to how sophisticated and knowledgeable our, is our donor base. And I think there's a little bit of a learning curve that needs to happen over the next few years on that front. And then just to finish up with two things. First, yes. uh, you mentioned the progressive battleground on which we're essentially fighting. A we big arrow in the 
big arrow in the quiver of the progressives is, well, tax exempt philanthropy. Uh, some aggressive populist conservatives, J.D. Vance, who's a candidate, which I assume you like, right. and an ideas guy, ha yeah. have proposed sort of uh, calling into question, citing the politicization of it, uh, have, have proposed, well, taxing the endowments, yanking the C3 status if they don't give away a certain amount of money charitable, which they're supposed to, according to the deal, according to the right. C3. Uh, what do you think of that? Wouldn't that hurt your uh, essential call to sort of be more short-term political in your thinking about giving? Uh, where are you on the Vance proposal? Uh, I am open to all of the above solutions. How they get implemented in the real world is obviously the big question. Yeah. How does that look? How far do you go? You know, what are the real implications across the board? But I, I mean, I think you have to address what I call the, the, the indoctrination centers of higher learning that are really hedge funds with a school attached. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's gotten so far, but I, I would argue too, Mike, I mean, if you were to really go down that path of colleges, you got to look at the nonprofit hospitals. Of course, that's another topic in which I think people were given certain statuses to actually, there were expectations for that, which have been, they haven't been doing that. And so I think you've got to go back and say, hey, if these were the terms that were laid out at the very beginning, whether you're a college, university or a nonprofit hospital, we need to go back and say, are you actually staying true to why you have the nonprofit status? And if you're not, well, then we're going to completely re-examine that. So I think there is a middle ground in which, yeah, I think there should be a certain amount of, hey, you got this. There should be X number of dollars that are going out. And if not, well, then we're going to call into question the whole premise of this entire setup. Yeah. Uh, and then just file, are you jeopardizing funding sources for American majority by talking like this? Or are they a self-selecting sample of people who already... Uh, you know, believe in action in, in the way you've described Yeah, it. no, I mean, you know, some people, again, 10 years ago when I started writing the book and probably will at some point uh, finish it, the racket, how conservative Inc. has sold out America. You know, there are people like, you might call into question some of your funding. I think I've gotten to the point, having been around long enough, having developed relationships with some of these donors, and we have a robust mail program. So there's been a whole, you know, we're trying to diversify all these things. A lot of the donors that give to American majority believe in the mission and believe in this. And quite frankly, Mike, when they're approached by certain entities that some of us have questions about, they ask, what does Ned think? And then they look at my writings and look at my hits on Tucker and all these things and go, yeah, we don't even have this, have this conversation. So it is getting to the point where I think I've established enough of a record over 13 years with being able to have a good return on investments and that that they are now looking well what do you think about this having been involved in the movement for 13 years where do you think good investments are and again kind of in general i'm not going to give specific names but cheat towards action cheat towards people that i think are really trying to have more action oriented still based on the right ideas but going in and trying to make real change happen instead of sending out white papers in hopes that somehow somehow magically these ideas will be implemented. We actually have to have a systematic approach to implementation first, and then we can have a bigger conversation about more robust intellectual ammunition down the road. Right, okay. Well, why don't we end it there, Ned? I appreciate your taking the time to do this. Uh, Absolutely. Sounds like, sounds like you need and want to get back to work. Oh, there's a lot going on, Mike. But yeah, no, glad to, glad to chat with you. Okay.